<clears throat> all right, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rokakwadash. This is Aksham Gar. All right, <clears throat> I really don't have a lesson uh, titled yet. I'll figure that out later. Uh, but essentially, <clears throat> I just want to go into a couple different scriptures, you know. Um, I'm reading the book of Jeremiah and just going through, uh, you know, just a couple chapters. I'm like, damn, you know, uh, the Heavenly Father truly looked out for Jeremiah, man. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, <clears throat> through the scriptures, we'll read how Jacob, right, referring to Israel, right? You know, we went through Jacob's trouble a multi uh, multi uh, multiple different times, right? Let me just go ahead and bring this out. Jeremiah uh, chapter 30, verse 7, right? And it reads, in all history, it's lucky. I'll, I'll read it in the NLT. It looks kind of, you know, juicy. It says, Jer Jeremiah 30 and 7, in all history, there has never been such a time of terror. It will be a time of trouble for my people Israel. Yet in the end, they will be saved. All right. Now, let me go with the uh, version that everybody's accustomed to hearing. All right. Jeremiah 37, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So this is the point, man. Israel has went through Jacob's trouble many times, right? 70 AD, uh, when the Babylonians attacked this, <clears throat> right? Uh, uh, what other times? Shoot. You know, the, the, the Jacob's trouble that's coming. There's, it, there were many different Jacob's trouble. You know, some of them escaped me right now. But uh, those are like, you know, a lot of the main ones right there. <clears throat> you know, oftentimes you, you had Israel going through a famine, you know, where, uh, you know, we were resorted to, you know, cannibalism and different things like that. You'll hear scriptures talking about where, you know, two different women were saying, you know, making a plot to say, we'll eat my son today and we'll eat your son tomorrow. Right. And then when the time came that, you know, both of the ladies ate, they boiled the first son. And then on the next day, you know, the last lady, she hid her, she hid her son. Right when it was time to eat her son, but but the point of the matter is, it got so gruesome and, and, and bad in Jerusalem that we had to resort a resort to cannibalism. Right, so it says that in this Jacob's trouble, the one that's coming is going to be far greater than any one before. Right, <clears throat> Esau is going to be rolling in like a flood. Right, the, all these different things, man, going door to door trying to force that shop, you know that 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 arm juice on people. But the heavenly Father is going to protect us, man. Let me read this for you, right. Because going through uh, these couple scriptures and um, chapters in Jeremiah, it really made this uh, scripture come to life. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 11. Where am I at? Verse 8. Verse 11, it says, um, The Lord shall, uh, Lord said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. So the remnant is talking about the elect, 144,000, right? Now we understand that some of the 144,000 are already back in the spiritual world right now. So we don't know how many uh, Akim need to be sealed on this side, right? It could be 500, it could be 7,000, it could be 142,000 people, you know, that need to be sealed on this side. We don't know, but we understand that uh, the Lord has left a remnant and the Lord he, he, he literally deals with a, a remnant in most cases, right? I believe in the book of Isaiah, it says that uh, the Lord, he left uh, 7,000 men, right? Faithful men that have not bowed the knee to Baal, right? Which means <clears throat> you have 7,000, the Lord left a remnant of men that were faithful unto him and didn't serve other idols as Israel was doing, man. That's what we were known for doing. Constantly, we went off for idolatry, Right? But look what it says. It says, the Lord said, verily, it shall be well with thy remnant, right? Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in time of evil and in time of affliction. So when you go through the uh, the, uh, the book of Jeremiah, especially in the 30s, right? You see how Jerusalem, had, um, had, you know, has started to get sieged by uh, the Babylonian Empire, right? And the, and the Most High used the Babylonian Empire, right? To actually uh, use uh, their authority, their, their, uh, their armies, their military might. To afflict us, you see what I'm saying, and burn and burn Jerusalem, and you know, just try to tear it apart and put our even put it, even put our king in slavery, right? I believe uh, the king's name was Zedekiah, right? Gouged out his eyes, killed his sons, took away his wives, all that, man, right? And just straight up, you know, sent sent majority of us to uh, uh into exile, right? So the the heavenly Father did that because Israel didn't want to hearken to the Most High, and then when you read the Book of Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah prophesied. That 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 um, all the king had to do was just you know surrender to the king of Babylon and everything was gonna be well with him, but he didn't trust the Yahweh Shai, and that was to his detriment, man. 
you know so he had to suffer the fate because the lord said if you don't trust me and, and you don't you know basically if you don't uh do what i tell you to do i'm gonna have the king the king of uh, uh babylon come in and you know and destroy y'all all right so let me just hop right into it i'm in yeah i'm in uh jeremiah 38 I'm going to read how, because Jeremiah, he was spitting, right? Basically, he was spitting these prophecies. He was letting them know, uh, the kings of Zedekiah and the people of Israel, what, what was going to happen, right? And they didn't want to hear it, man. He was like, just calling him a traitor, saying that, you know, uh, the king of Babylon was going to destroy uh, uh, Jerusalem, right? You know, basically, they put, him in, they put him in jail. So verse 14, let me go ahead and read this. It says, then Zedekiah, Jeremiah 3 and 14, then Zedekiah, the king sent, and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. Right. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing. Hide nothing from me. Right. So people just kept putting Jeremiah in jail. But the king, he secretly asked Jeremiah. He was like, yo, so tell me what was going on. Like, you know, what, are, are, what the Lord at? What, what, what did the Lord say again? Right. Just basically, basically just you see how right here is even titled the Se a secret interview. Right. So. King Zedekiah went to Jeremiah and was like, yo, tell me what's going to happen, right? So verse 15 says, then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, if I declare it unto thee, will thou not surely put me to death? So if I say, if I say what I said to you, if I say what I'm going to say to you again, ain't you going, ain't you going to try to kill me? Because you already put me in jail, right? That's where Jeremiah coming from. It says, if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken? Unto, well, it's like it. Will thou not hearken unto me? So are you going to listen to me if I do? Verse 16 right verse 16 reads so zedekiah the king swear secretly unto jeremiah saying as the lord liveth that made us this soul i will not put thee to death neither will i give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life so a lot of people wanted the, uh, the, uh, uh jeremiah's death but did they get it no they did not because the lord was with jeremiah right and i want you to remember jeremiah 15 and 11 right so verse 17 it says and then said jeremiah unto zedekiah right Thus saith the Lord, uh, uh, the Most High of hosts, right? The God of Israel, if thou were assuredly go forth unto the king. So basically, yo, all right, listen, this is the word I'm, t I'm hearing from the Heavenly Father. If you go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, right? It says, then thy soul shall live and this city shall not be burned with fire and thou shall live in thy house. So meaning, yo, if you just listen to what the, what the Lord is telling you, right? Through me, if you just surrender yourself unto Babylon, What's going to happen is everything going to be cool with you. Everything for you and your household, right? But you think this man did it? Of course he didn't. It says, but if thou will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall the city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand, right? And let me get, you know, what, what, what actually happened. And the next chapter, uh, I'm going to go to uh, Jeremiah ch chapter 39, verse 6. And it says, then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah and Riblah before his eyes. So the king didn't hearken unto what the Most High said through Jeremiah. So now, what had, what you think came to pass? Of course, what the Lord said. No word, you know, that the heavenly father speaks, man. It goes back to him void, right? So it, it's going to accomplish that which he fulfills, right? So it says, then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah, right? And Riblah before his eyes, right? Also, the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put, uh, it's like, it. moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him into Babylon, right? I'm gonna read this in NLT so y'all can see. When it says put out his eyes, he mean he gouged his eyes out, right? Gruesome death. That's what happens when you don't fear the Lord. Hearken unto his word. He says, the king of Babylon made Zedekiah watch as he slaughtered his sons, right? So look, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to kill your sons right in front of you. That's what he did, right? And it says, <clears throat> as he watched his sons, uh, uh, as he slaughtered his sons at Riblah, the king of Babylon also slaughtered all the nobles of Judah, right? Because them niggas was trying to, uh, uh, they was trying to uh, put Jeremiah in prison, man, right? Some of them. So it says, verse 7, it says, Then he gouged out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in bronze chains to lead him away to Babylon. Right? <clears throat> so you see what was going on? Just just, just, just straight chaos, man. It was getting, they was getting tore up. But that was only happening because they didn't fear the Heavenly Father, man. 
They didn't hearken on what to uh, uh, to what uh, Jeremiah was saying, man. King, uh, so let me, let me go to verse eleven. King Nebuchadnezzar had told Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the captain of the guard, to find Jeremiah. So Jeremiah, he was still in jail at this time, right? So they was like, all right. So uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the king of Babylon, he was like, yo, yo. He said to his man, one of his mans, he was like, yo, go find Jeremiah, right? Out of all people, he's saying, go find Jeremiah. This is how you know the Lord was rocking for Jeremiah, right? It says, uh, the captain of the guards to find Jeremiah, see that he isn't hurt, right? So let me ask you something, right? Jeremiah was an Israelite, correct? Okay, so if Jeremiah was an Israelite, isn't the enemy of Jeremiah the king of Babylon, right? Because he just attacked his home, right? And killed one of the kings, uh, 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 you know, that sat on the king, the, the throne of David. Right? Would that not be uh, Jeremiah's enemy? But let's look what it said before. You know what I mean? Because I pulled this out earlier. All right? Jeremiah chapter 15 and 11. Right? And it's all going to tie in. It says, The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Right? Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in time of evil and in time of affliction. Was that not an evil time? Right? When Jerusalem was getting burned and, 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 and the king of uh, uh, Judah, he was getting his eyes gouged out and he had to watch his own sons be slaughtered right before his eyes, right? Was that not an evil time? But for Jeremiah, look what it says. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well. So was was not Jeremiah entreated well? He was in the time of evil and in time, a time of affliction. So this is what happens to the man's, uh, to the heavenly uh, father's prophets, man, right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep reading. So it says, so Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Neb Neb the captain, I like, I'm gonna keep reading verse 12. It says, See that he isn't hurt, he said. Look after him well and give him anything he wants. That's the, that's crazy. So you got your king and everybody else getting slaughtered around you. But Jeremiah, he was protected by the Heavenly Father. Why do you think Jeremiah got everything that he wants? Because look what look what Jeremiah had to go through for preaching the word of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Everybody hated him for it. It was like, ah oh, man, you're a traitor. You know what I'm saying? You trying to say that Babylon going to destroy us? Man, you, you know, you're not standing for your people. You're trying to kill our morale, right? To the few fighting men we got left. Okay. Look who was left standing. Jeremiah. You see what I'm saying? So that's it. So, so us, men, uh, men of the Lord, as we claim to be, man, trying to uh, fervently serve your Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we should, we should expect the same protection in this time of great uh, 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 tribulation and great evil, like it says in Jeremiah 30 and 7. That, that day of Jacob's trouble that no other time has been as crazy as this time is going to be, right? So it says, where am I at? Verse 12, right? <clears throat> Give him anything he wants. So uh, let me just go to... Yeah, let me start at verse 40 and I'm gonna uh I'm gonna start winding down after that. <clears throat> so verse 40, right? And I'm gonna read this in the NOT. So the Lord gave a message to Jeremiah after Nezajaran. So Nezajaran was one of the captains of the guard of Babylonia, the Babylonians, right? So the Lord gave a message to Jeremiah, right? After the captain of the guard <clears throat> had released him at Ramah. He had found on uh, Jeremiah bound in chains among all the other captains of Jerusalem. Who Judah were being sent to exile in Babylon. So when 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 the king of uh, of Babylon told his his captain of the guard, go look for Jeremiah, give him anything he wants, make sure he cool. The captain of the guard found Jeremiah bound up in chains. Right. So let's see what he did. The captain of the guard called Jeremiah and said, "The Lord God has brought this disaster on this land." Right. Just as he said he would, for these people have sinned against the Lord and disobeyed him. This is why it happened. So the Lord is literally telling you why the land got destroyed, man. Huh? Right? You know, and, and King got his eyes gouged out and his son slaughtered because they didn't want to hearken unto the Heavenly Father. And so many times throughout the, the book of Jeremiah, you see the Lord just saying, please, Israel, just repent. Basically, just letting, let, letting Israel know, if y'all just repent, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll turn away all this that I, that I said I was going to do to y'all with the, with the Babylonians. But you think Israel, listen. It says, but I'm going to take off your chains and let you go, right? So the captain of the guard told Jeremiah, I'm, I'm about to take off your chains and let you go. If you want to come with me to Babylon, you are welcome. I will see that you are well cared for. Damn, does that not bring Jeremiah 15 and 11 to a life, right? So should we not as prophets and priests of the heavenly father and teachers, right? For the nation of Israel, should we not expect the same treatment? That Jeremiah got, because if we are a, hundred, a part of the 144,000, the Heavenly Father is going to take care of us just as he did Jeremiah, right? 
That's crazy. It should boost you up, man. It says, if you want to come with me to Babylon, you are welcome. I will see that you are well cared for. But if you don't want to come, you may stay here. The whole land is before you. Go wherever you like. That's cold, man. If you decide to stay, then return to Galal, the son of Echam, and the, and the grandson of uh, Shaphan. And, and he has appointed governor over Judah by the king of Babylon. Stay there with the people he rules. But it is up to you. Go wherever you like. Right? You see that? So Jeremiah returned to Gilead, uh, and, and and he lived in in Judah with the few who were still left. So I, I think they left like the poor, the poor people in Judah, and to, you know, to, you know, to stay stay at the land and everything like that. So the Most High, he allowed the enemy to entreat Jeremiah well in time of evil and in time of affliction, right? And I bet that King Zedekiah, I bet he peeped something, right? Let me get this. Let me get this scripture for y'all. Ezekiel chapter 33 and 33 right let's go ahead and read this <clears throat> it says and then when this cometh to pass right lo it will come then shall they know that a prophet had been among them so what jeremiah was saying man they didn't believe it but when it came to pass you think they thought jeremiah was crazy then you thought you thought they thought jeremiah was a traitor then it was like damn yo he prophesied this but guess what it was too late he was getting his eyes gouged out and, and his son's killed before him. You know what I'm saying? And there's some other stuff in there too that that, that was uh, prophesied to happen as well. You know, but um, you got to read it for yourself, man. But I just thought that was very cool. And I was just like, damn, man, I got to share this with the Akimit Akwathian, man. You know, because this is this should be a faith booster when we go through, you know, Jacob's trouble. We should have in our minds these, these, these particular stories, man. Like, not stories, but like these actual events that happen. So like, yeah, because I don't even want to call them stories because stories just sound like it's something made up. This is this is real. So you want to have these events that happen, you know, to our forefathers, man. And, you know, uh, Lord willing, you get built up by him. Right. So that way, when you're going through uh, trouble and even when in time of affliction, that you'll believe and have faith that the Heavenly Father is going to reward you. Right. For everything that you uh, are going through. Let me read this for you, because if you don't, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So I write chapter 2 and verse 13, it says, Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. So if you don't believe, right, <clears throat> if you don't have faith and you're faint-hearted in those times, right, you're not going to be defended. So this proves that what? You have to have the faith. You have to have faith in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that he's going to protect you and provide for you, man. And, and, and I promise you he will as long as you're doing what's required of you, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, and, and serving the heavenly father in truth and sincerity look at this second uh, uh Sirach chapter 2 and 10 look at the generations of old and see did any ever trust in the lord and was confounded so did jeremiah trust in the lord and, and wound up being confounded of course not jeremiah was he was protected right it says or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken so did jeremiah abide in the fear of, of yahweh bashim yahweh he did was he forsaken right when everybody else was going into slavery and in exile into babylon no the, the heavenly father remembered him right and what he did he, what did he do he allowed the enemy to entreat him well in time of evil and in time of affliction so we should expect the same so you got to have faith and not be faint-hearted right it says right here or whom did he ever despise that called upon him so you think the heavenly father is going to despise you because you calling upon him when all he was asking in the book of jeremiah was his people to repent and turn to him right so you think when you actually turn to yahweh bashim yahweh shai that he's gonna get mad for that especially when you when you're trying to serve him in truth and sincerity and follow his law statutes and commandments to the best of your ability you're tripping so you gotta have that faith inside of you man and yahweh bashim yahweh shai is gonna protect us no matter what you see that so you know <clears throat> i'm gonna leave off on that and i hope that you akim and akwati and were edified exhorted and comforted and with that i want to say yahweh bashim yahweh shai barak give all honor glory and praise to yahweh bashim yahweh shai bashim rakakwadash shalom y'all